Welcome to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. I'm your host, Morgan Klein, co-founder and CEO, along with my husband and company visionary, Devin Klein. And together with our amazing team, we are gonna help you push past your limits, not just physically in our gyms, but right here, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually on the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. Together, we will take on challenges and break through barriers to transform into the best possible version of ourselves. We are more than a gym. We are a community, your community. Let's Let's go, go, Burn Nation. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. I am your co-host with my other co-hosts here, uh, Morgan and Trish. We got Charlie as a guest today on the HQ Crew episode. We have some long-awaited Burn Nutrition releases for you. uh, Pre, We're going to talk pre- and post-workout routines and also a little bit of science behind the pre-workout. All right, so this is going to be an exciting episode. Uh, Morgan Klein is in the house, as always, to hold down the HQ Crew episodes with me, Morgan. How are you today? What's up? I'm doing good. Feeling good, feeling great? I'm feeling great. I'm excited to share some uh, exciting things with you guys today and talk about uh, some some current events out there in Burn Nation and and beyond. So thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for listening. I'm excited. We got you, Charlie. First time on the podcast. Yeah, first time. Thanks for having me. uh, So yeah, we got Trish. We got Charlie. What are we? uh, What's up, Trish? How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm feeling great. Actually, um, took camp this morning, and I was you know thinking about the podcast, and I was like, man, I actually wanted to just share. Like, I feel really strong. I'm I'm really liking these uh, the focus, the programming focuses because it's allowing me to actually like go into camp and like act like feel more intentional about what I'm doing. So you know, July we're doing all we were doing all the farmers carries, and it's something that I don't I guess I don't really feel like we've done much before, but doing it consistently, I just am feeling stronger than I ever have, and so I'm feeling great. Great, You're looking strong. Thank you yeah, for saying that. Absolutely. I appreciate it. I working see that hard. Muscle definition over trying, there. I'm Woo! Trying. How's those hands from all those farmers carries? That, what do you think? I do think I need to get like some gloves. Do we need actually. to come out with some burn gloves? I think we need some gloves. Yeah. Can you guys make we, that happen? Do you we've guys had have gloves before. So I maybe, see them floating around. Yeah. 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 Maybe we got to bring them back. My hands are gnarly at, right after I get out of the pool. Oh. It just looks like, oh, just my hand went through a shredder because all the dead skin <laughs> on it. Yeah. Like Cameron's like, ew, dad, what is, what is that? That's gross. Comes peel, with the territory, babe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Charlie, welcome, like, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's man. Good to be here. Why don't you give yourself a little intro for those that don't know who you are, Charlie? Yeah, so I am on the Burn Media Co. side of things, a sister company to Burn Boot Camp. We're a full-service marketing agency. Been been here for about five years. All right. And uh, we, uh, we go uh, way back. It's been five years. That's like forever in the burn world five years working but i've known you guys for <laughs> yeah. it's been uh eight 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 ish. years yeah. yes yeah well we're uh, we're happy to have you today charlie and listen it's, it is like end of july i'm feeling really good everyone i i have to echo what trish is saying i feel strong um you know i've been trying some things with my nutrition lately i think it's my job in some way shape or form to like experiment and trial and error um, and you know, I'm really on this like personal journey to reacclimate with like the highest physical version of myself, which is a tall task because the best shape I've ever been in my life was when I was like 24, 25, fresh out of professional baseball, went right into bodybuilding, like everything I was Quit like bragging. so dialed in, <laughs> so dialed in. And then you start a business that consumes a lot of your time, and then you have three children back to back to back to back. And you know, I went I went uh, toward the dad bod lifestyle there for a little while. <laughs> you were busy. Uh, I always maintain my workouts though, and like that's important it's, to me. It's like the anchor of my entire life. So I've never I've never stopped. But nutrition is where it's at, and it's time to dial that in. So I'm excited to talk about some. Uh, Burn Nutrition releases that we have because yes. it's uh, we design our products here at Burn Bootcamp to basically scratch our own itch, and we're all <laughs> we're all moms, we're all dads, we're all busy professionals, mm-hmm. and we need to make sure that this grab and go society doesn't take us out of our game. Mm-hmm. That we are able to have supplements and meals that are readily available. So our goal at Burn Bootcamp was just to provide that, right? Not only to provide the supplements. And we'll later release uh, meals this fall, but to also the resources around it. All right. But today we're going to talk about two exciting supplement releases. Morgan, uh, kick it to you for that. Yeah. So we just wrapped up Summit uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we got to release two new products. 
Um, and I have him here today in the studio. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, you will get to see us taking this live. Uh, but if not, you might have heard about it or seen it in your location. They're available in your location. They will be available on Ecom, uh, but we always like to give our locations the opportunity to sell it first and our members to get it first. So two new releases. We have Blue Raspberry Ignite. So Ignite is a product that we created. It was our second product outside of protein. So uh, when Devin and I you know, went into the supplement industry, we first were looking for a clean protein because when we were recommending things to our members, we just couldn't find anything that didn't have a bunch of sucralose, artificial ingredients in it, lots of fillers. And so it was really hard to stand behind something. And uh, so we had the opportunity to, to work with, you know, some companies and develop our own protein. So the first skew was protein, but then the second was a pre-workout because again, we had a hard time finding something that we felt good and comfortable with the ingredients. And so our first one was berry, which has since been discontinued. And I think it's just a, a testament to how you ebb and flow, you evolve, you create different flavor profiles, you innovate. Um, we've moved vendors. We've we've really upped our game in burn supplements. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we've actually redone all of our formulas for the most part. And um, Ignite is, is definitely one of them. So we have a new flavor, but we've also enhanced our Ignite flavor. So if you've maybe tried our pre-workout years ago, and I would encourage you to try it again, uh, but Blue Raspberry. So we're going to take a little shot of this real quick. Let's Charlie, I know you're not a big pre-workout fan, which we're going to talk <laughs> about later in this podcast, but we're going to take you out of your comfort zone today. So hey. we're going to pass some shots along. Do it for the content. All right. I'm down. All right. Pass Let's along. Go. Pass along. So Blue Raspberry. So uh, Devin, share with us while I'm pouring these. Um, I guess I could have poured them first. What other flavors we have? Yeah, a pink lemonade, green apple. Um, uh, now we have the blue ras flavor. These are a peach. 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 Uh, these are my. These are my. Like this is my go-to supplement. Afterburn is my love because mm -hmm. I know just the power of protein and what it can do for your body. Mm -hmm. But to me, like um, I told you, how religious I am about working out, and it is the anchor to my life and my lifestyle. Well, I want to take advantage of each one of those workouts. And so our protein really does three things, two of them that can directly uh, in impact performance, which uh, A is the beta alanine in the protein. Our, our pre-workout, not our what, protein. What, what did I say? Protein? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I like to correct at the you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the pre-workout formula, the beta alanine, it, it's, like a la it's like an acid inhibitor. So what it does is allows you to basically clear the acid out, the lactic acid that causes your muscles to feel tight um, in some, it's partly responsible for the soreness and that just tight overall feeling to where you like, you feel sore, you're kind of tight. You can't really get that output that you want, that performance output. Uh, this has beta alanine in it, which helps to move out lactic acid um, to just free up the normal functionality and performance uh, of your muscle. And then obviously it has caffeine and the caffeine is just going to give you that quick, clean, it's from green tea, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the third kind of superpower of it. It's green tea is a superfood. And so, you know, we wanted to make a, a product that didn't just, wasn't just a caffeine based pre-workout powder because you can get those like dime a dozen everywhere. We wanted it to really have at least three really tangible purposes. Uh, so you can feel good about taking it because it's a superfood, it's superfood based. Uh, it does have that traditional uh, caffeine uh, from matcha, which is a much more clean feeling. Uh, um, the science, we can go deep on the science of caffeine later, but it's just a much more clean feeling than you would get from like... You don't get uh, the jitters. Yeah, like an artificial energy drink, a five-hour energy or a monster or something like that. And, you know, finally, you know, that the biggest... The biggest benefit to me is is the beta alanine, which which like we said increases your performance. So, um, I take two or three scoops, probably a little bit more than I should be taking, Sheesh. to be honest with you, Bernation. But um, you know, it really jacks me up about 15 minutes before a workout. And if you've ever trained with me in the gym, like well, there, uh, it's I have one speed, and it's thanks to in part to ignite. I would like to just let everyone know there's 40 milligrams of caffeine in our yes. pre-workout. So I think a standard, like I know my husband takes pre-workout and his pre-workout is like 200 milligrams. I think so a standard cup of coffee is like 145 milligrams. Yeah. yeah so like just, I don't want people to know you're not that crazy. Yeah. You know, like it's okay. Yeah. Charlie's yeah. talking about a deep black Colombian <laughs> fresh off the farm. I think most That's, like average are like 80, 40 to 80, a cup of yeah. coffee is 40 to 80. Really? Uh, gen generally speaking, we can mm -hmm. fact check it, but I'm pretty sure eight ounces of like normal coffee. I'm an espresso guy. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure high. you're packing yeah. it in, packing the caffeine yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We Let's ready? Do it. Okay. okay. Are we Cheers. ready? Cheers. 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 Right, we're going to be jacked it. this whole podcast. <laughs> 
They'd be like, why are you Trish taking is going to be talking so fast. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm on Devin's program, though. Mm. I, I like a lot of caffeine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's good. It's delicious. They say not to exceed 500 milligrams a day and then to take two weeks off at least every 90 days. So I'll just go with that recommendation. I do not follow that recommendation. I have <laughs> never taken a day off of caffeine since I was 16, probably, yes. oh, when man. I started drinking caffeine. So I have. I need, to, I need to do that. Yeah, it's probably wise. <laughs> yeah. I didn't love it, probably but was. I did it for six weeks. No caffeine. And I did that mud water. How did it feel? Oh, I felt great once I got through the hump of like headaches and, yeah. you know. And then I let my body naturally have energy. And so, but here I am drinking coffee. And <laughs> you made it. You're fine. <laughs> Pre-workout again. What okay. I, what I do want to say before you switch to peanut butter bars is, and you can feel this too, Trish, you've always taken Ignite, right? Yes. Pretty much. So the older product, as we're mentioning, that we've mm. reformulated, the older product had a, a slightly more tingle to it. And yeah. we reformulated to keep the beta alanine properties. Beta alanine, for some unknown reason, does that to the human body. We might know it. I don't know it. I haven't come across it even when I've tried to research it. Everything that I found kind of says, oh, we don't really know why that happens particularly. Um, so we just kept working with the formula until we had a reduction in that feeling just like from a human perception standpoint. And so you get a little tiny faint bit, yeah. but you're not getting that, you know, my fingers have like fingers that have yeah, feelings. Yeah, itching or yes. anything like that. I yeah. definitely think it, it, everyone's going to react to it a little bit different um, to, the, to that ingredient. So there are times that like just depending on what I've ate that day, you know, if I take it on an empty stomach, sometimes I do feel a little bit more like I need to go work my body out or else I'm like, you know, I'm not scratching myself, <laughs> but I definitely am feeling that way. But I know that's not for everybody. So also I want to say before we move on, if you're listening to this, you might be thinking, can I take this when I'm pregnant? Can I take this when I'm breastfeeding? Um, cause I get that question all the time. And so I always just share my experience first and foremost, it's the best to say, check with your doctor, but the ingredients in our products, in all of our supplements are not going to be harmful. It's just about, you know, from, from a caffeine perspective, what else are you consuming that day? So obviously if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, you're trying to monitor your caffeine cause that is passing through to the baby. Um, so for me with pre-workout, I, I usually prioritized my coffee over my pre-workout just because I enjoyed it a little bit more. So I kind of, um, towards the end of my pregnancy stopped taking it. Um, and then same with, uh, breastfeeding. However, it is a safe product, but again, check with your doctor and, and monitor how you're consuming caffeine throughout the rest of the day, um, through other sources. So just wanted to make sure to say that cause we may get that question or you may be wondering that. So, all right, Devin already revealed the tease of our next product release that we had at summit, which is a new flavor of our burn bootcamp afterburn protein bar. So we are also going to try that here live in the studio. I think this one is going to be a bestseller. Yes. What do you have you tried it yet, Charlie? I have. Yeah. Oh, you darn have? it. Okay. I wanted to get your okay. initial reaction. Yeah. It's so good, y'all. Oh my goodness. I am a peanut butter fiend. Oh, yeah. It's so peanut so butter I'm, cup too. Peanut yeah. butter cup. Yeah. So this one is joining two other um uh flavors. We have triple chocolate almond butter and or triple ch triple chocolate almond and then um cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. So it's another flavor profile. It's peanut butter, which is a big, it's a, it's a number one seller in the industry of protein bars. And so naturally we wanted to, to put that out there and see how it does in Burn Nation. Um, but again, this is, this was born out of necessity for Devin and I and for, for Burn HQ, you know, to say what's something else that can be grab and go that we can feel good about that we're getting our protein in, uh, because we serve a lot of busy moms and dads and men and women and, you know, we are always whole foods first. We always want to encourage you to eat as much real whole food as you can, but let's be realistic with just the way that we all operate. And we need these options to stick this in our bag um, and, and do it before or after camp. And if you have kids, most likely they're stealing these from you. Yes. And so <laughs> I want to make sure that if my kids are eating something as well, that they're getting protein in, they're getting clean ingredients in. Um, and feeling good about it. So my kids love our like love them. They will choose an afterburn bar over candy yeah. in my house. Yeah, like yeah. they go fast. Yeah. Well, I I brought this one home before we released it. I only had like one box that Matt had given me, and so I brought one home because I knew better. I knew if I took the whole box home, they'd be gone. <laughs> and so I gave each one of our kids like a little bite, 
And I swear, since that day, they keep saying, where are the peanut butter cup bars? Like, where are they? And I'm like, they're going to be really soon. So I'm, I'm excited. They're finally out. We've got a case of them at the house um, and they go quick at our house. So I'm going to take one and pass it along. And we're going to cheers to. Oh, I got some down here, Trish. I got oh, you one. Okay. Oh, sweet. I, I'll break you off a little piece, Trish. You good with that? Thank you. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There, right. I'm sure everyone's going to love all this chewing. <laughs> the mic. All we right. will step back from the uh, microphone. I'm going to pop it in. Okay? All right. Cheers to go. peanut butter mm. cup and becoming a, a bestseller. Yeah. Play some like theme music right now. <laughs> mm. like, I'm in oh, heaven. Devin. Mm. You guys. It's you so guys. Good. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm. Yummy. We're excited for you guys to, to try this. It's got 17 grams of protein, 230 calories. So definitely something that is a good source of protein without overkill on your calories. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat the whole thing. Go, Trish. <laughs> Honestly, I really like our, our bars because what you said, protein, but it also keeps me full longer. So not only, I usually eat mine like in the afternoon because it, it, it kind of satisfies that sweet tooth. Mm-hmm. Gives me a protein, and then I don't have to keep snacking because I'm full because I had protein. Mm-hmm. So like, there's it just checks so many boxes, and I can eat it like on the go, like you yeah. said. So this I, is I keep mine for dessert. Yeah, because I don't. I'm not really a a sweet tooth guy. Peanut butter is my favorite like sweet treat. So that's I'll eat dinner and then or lunch or whatever. And if I'm like oh, I'm still a little bit hungry, yeah. Just do that. Afterburn bar. Especially warming it up for like 15 seconds in the microwave. Not Ooh. done that, but I'm going to You're going to have now. to try that. <laughs> yeah. say, I've never done that, but I think with this one, it's almost like yeah. you have yeah. to. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I've delicious. done it with all the other two as well. Um, my go-to is 11 seconds. It just gives it a soft, <laughs> just the perfect. gooey middle without melting it. And I, on the other hand, have a huge sweet tooth which is in part for my recent struggles, <laughs> in which, which I'm trying not to. So we designed the Afterburn Bars to get Devin's uh, away from his dad bod and back into his true self. <laughs> All right. That's what I got, guys, on nutrition releases. Uh, we're going to Summit Top Achievements. Okay, so we were just at, at, in Summit, mm-hmm. and uh, every year we do a business summit in the summer, uh, in either the month of, of June or July, and this it was incredible oh my goodness i still am buzzing uh, all the energy from uh, the summit here in charlotte and we wanted to bring with you uh, bring to you rather the top five awards well not maybe the top five but five notable awards yep. from summit to help celebrate our franchise partners uh, our trainers our ops managers and our rising gym so trish i'm gonna i'm gonna let you do that um and i will first say before she does that that uh, go ahead and make sure to get a hold of one of these people that you hear their name and just congratulate them, okay? They're going to love that you heard their name on the Burn Bootcamp podcast and that you reached out to them to say congratulations about their Summit Award. Yeah, no, I love Summit. It's the the vibe after you go, going into Summit and then after there's just so much energy and Vibos, my first time actually being able to host uh, the Vibos award ceremony. And so just getting to know more about the facts behind these awards, just amazing. So I'm really excited to then share again who our top winners were. So we have our multi-unit franchise partners of the year, Caroline and Daniel Jones. Oh. Huge shout out to them. Let's go. They, they own in Kennesaw and Ackworth, Georgia. So just for any of you guys that are in those areas, if you haven't checked out those gyms, their communities are amazing. Boomin. Mm-hmm. Our single unit franchise partner of the year. Let's give it up for Melanie Skinner of Ashburn, Virginia. Woo! Let's go, Melanie. Yes. Yeah, well Melanie. Deserved. Trainer of the year from Verona, Wisconsin. We had Claire Roan yeah. as our Let's trainer of the year. Woo! Let's go, Claire. Keep changing lives. Operations manager of the year, Tammy Davis of Leesburg, Virginia. Let's go, Tammy. Let's go, Tammy. Let's go, Tammy. And then our rookie of the year. This is an incredible story. There's just so much about these two ladies. Um, Cammie and Carly from Springfield, Missouri. Ooh, they right. actually found Burn Bootcamp through Burn On Demand. Just the, the whole journey has just been incredible. So congratulations to Cammie and Carly yeah. as well. Yeah, we were just there. Yeah. Uh, Morgan, Matt, and I just went there. We celebrated. They're one of the fastest. If the No, they are, are the, the fastest, fastest to gym 500. to 500 members in Burn Nation's history. So no surprise there. With Rookie of the Year, and the community was just electric. I got a chance to train a camp, uh, to take a camp there, and it is uh, no surprise why they got the Rookie of the Year award at Summit. Mm-hmm. Two, of, two of my very favorite people, mm-hmm. just people. They're they just, are amazing. They're yeah. incredible people. And yeah. uh, we've, we got to do their grand opening with them 
at Burn Media Co., which was awesome. And we knew immediately that they were special. It mm-hmm. was going to be really special. And it was, they're and great. And they are. They're and the so community cool. is a testament to that. So yeah, they're changing lives for sure. All, all of, all of our nation is changing lives, but they're certainly leading the way and setting a new standard for, for a lot of us. So, mm-hmm. you know what I learned about Springfield, Missouri, that Bass Pro Shops, I think his name is oh. Jimmy Moore. Uh, Morris. Morris. He's a big, he's big yes. in NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got we he got was, he was hats. Like, they gave us hats because they were giving us stuff that were, were, was local to Springfield. So us and the kids all have Bass Pro Shop nice. hats now. I love it. <laughs> I wore it this week, this past weekend, and I was like, I'm feeling very country right now. I also have this weird obsession. Like my favorite book of all time is Made in America by Sam Walton, and I have this weird obsession with like entrepreneurs of the 50s, 60s, and 70s during like the retail merchandising boom that stood up brick and mortars across the country and just made empires like Home Depot and Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Like Arthur Blank is the owner of the uh, Atlanta Falcons who was the Home Depot founder, him and his partner. So I just thought it was, I didn't know that Bass Pro Shops was found in Springfield. So I'm like, oh, I got now I got to go go study everything about this man now. (laughs) All right, we got a new location. New location, 405 West Springfield, Virginia. Brett Heisinger, who I know very well. Um, I love that dude. He's <laughs> he's such an interesting guy. He's a uh, serial entrepreneur. I think he owns like 11 businesses mm-hmm. altogether. <laughs> so crazy. all over the place. But he doesn't take focus away from his burn boot camp locations. This is his fourth location in the D.C. area. Um, and he trains camps. So as busy as he is he's the lead trainer and he, he sets a standard. He has a great culture, um, making sure that everybody feels very special. He loves on his members very well. Um, and it's, it, he's, he's fascinating because he's such an intense guy. Mm-hmm. And so I think when, when people meet him, you're like, man, that's an intense dude, but he's yeah. so giving and so generous and such a loving dude. And he's, he's great. Awesome. Love, love Brett. Yeah. Shout Congrats, out to Brett. Man. Yeah. West Springfield. Can't wait to get there. Four Oh five. Wow. What do you think about 405 more when you <laughs> you see that number and you're like, not too long ago, it was number four and then number five, and now it's four, yeah. there's a zero in the middle? Yeah. No, I definitely, like all the milestones stick out to me, the 100, the 200, the 300, 400, and it's, it's but at any location, it still amazes me that we're able to do this for a living. So, Shout super out to proud. Brett. Shout out to Brett. Um, we have a burn story coming uh, from Harrisburg, North Carolina. I want to share with you all Veronica's story today. Uh, Veronica joined in January of 2024. So this is like right now. Basically, this is six months ago. And she has never wanted uh, more than to just feel the discipline that she's feeling at burn. And when we get discipline in our lives, we all know, you know how that manifests itself into physical and, and mental health and before burn boot camp, she was driving 30 or 40 minutes to a gym and that drive became very draining. Uh, and if you have ever driven somewhere, uh, uh for a long extended period of time, pe- people do this all over burn nation. It gets old after a while. I remember my first training job ever. Um, I was driving an hour and a half to my very first client and it's just not sustainable. Although people do it in burn nation and, you know, uh, but Veronica was doing that trek every day, and she attempted to go to two previous gyms uh, before coming, but the classes or at, at her two previous gyms weren't flexible with her schedule. And so when she found out about Burn Bootcamp through several friends and saw the results that they had been getting, she decided to give it a try. And, you know, she immediately felt like the gym was home. And a lot of people have that reaction because you go to a gym, you don't expect a gym to feel like... A, second home to you. You don't expect it to feel so welcoming, so open, you know, having the people there welcome you with open arms. A lot of times people that, you know, um, aren't necessarily not projecting this onto Veronica, but that aren't necessarily in shape or or intrinsically motivated, you know, tend to shy away from gyms because of that culture. And so, you know, when you walk into a burn, it's open arms and she felt that right away. And, you know, she, her favorite part obviously now is that she lives 10 minutes from it. Uh, but she said she would still drive 30 minutes if Burn was 30 minutes away from her. So I thought that was just I do unique. Uh, yeah, do you drive 30 minutes, say, 30 minutes every day? During this. Yep. Yeah, yeah, We're worth it. Yeah, yeah, uh, it definitely is. And you know, Veronica's feeling it in her life, and she's been able to make life changes that are just motivating for all the people around her. And um, one of the things that stuck out to me about her story is just the ease of the food and drink choices that 
you know, when you're, when you're working out and you're showing up doing something hard every day, it's much easier to make the choices in your life, um, that are normally hard, like food, especially food decisions. And you have this intrinsic accountability that's starts to begin to get manufactured over time because you are showing up to the gym. You don't want to waste all of, all of that hard work. And so just showing up, um, forces you to tend to have better, not forces, but you tend to have better choices in life, especially with nutrition. So burn has gotten her out of her comfort zone and just pushed her to pushed her to, um, you know, new heights with nutrition and, and, uh, really she's feeling like a all around badass in her life. So, uh, she's afraid of doing box jumps at first. She's now doing box jumps. So it's just shout out to Veronica for finding burn for, uh, sticking with it for overcoming, um, you know, the, uh, the obstacles that it takes to keep consistent in the gym. Shout out to you. Yeah. Congrats, Veronica. What I love about this story is just how she talked about, um, making better food and drink choices. And it's just, it's so true when you can start to do one thing for yourself, it, it then impacts other decisions that you make throughout the day because you want to preserve that good feeling that you have after a workout and you want to just see what, what else is out there for you to be the best version of yourself. And, uh, when you keep an open mind of like, hey, it's not just physical, it's also the nutrition, it's also who I surround myself with, it's all these other components to really be the best version of yourself, then it's amazing what you get attracted to. So, yeah, I think what sticks out to me is what she says. She got put, she it burn pushed her outside of her comfort zone, and we hear this so much. And I also have felt this in my own burn journey. And you know, I think part of this, as I'm listening to Devin talk about her story, and I think there's something to it. We've talked about it on a previous podcast where you get like this awareness. I think when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone, if you didn't have that level of, of awareness before, you start to get it because you start to realize that you're doing things that you've maybe never done before, that you were scared to do. Now you have a community around you to support you in doing your first ever box jump. And then that then transcends to what can I do outside of our four walls? And I think that for me, obviously, I live in the marketing world and there's just such a story to tell there about how we're helping people um, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally just become stronger human individuals. And that's what I'm getting from her story. And I just love it so much. I yeah. think people don't, <clears throat> usually they don't realize how much better they feel until they feel better. And then they're mm -hmm. like, oh, it's the, it's the contrast yeah. that they notice. Yeah. And so they start making better food and drink choices, higher intensity workouts, better, you know, social settings, mm -hmm. good community, good friends. And then you go, oh, this is this is better. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to yeah. keep, I'm going to keep going down this road. Yeah. It's worth it. Good job, Shout out Veronica. to you, Veronica. Keep going. All Let's right. Go. Right here in our backyard at Harrisburg, North Carolina. Uh, we, uh, I was just there not too long ago as well. I mean, I, I love that. Just mm -hmm. staying in the gyms. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So uh, speaking of members, we're going to, uh, go to Amber now from Lake Norman, our flagship and she asked a question that I'd like all of us to weigh in on. So she said in a previous podcast, you guys have talked about getting 100 ounces of water per day. I also use Replenish Daily. Does that also count toward my 100 ounces of, a lot, uh, uh, ounces of water allotment per day? Or should I be drinking 100 ounces of plain water on top of that? That's an interesting question okay. because there's nuances to it. So um, I'm, I'll start and then I'll kick it to you, Trish. Mm -hmm. I think... It's very important to have this thought process. What it tells me is that you're self-aware. You're like, wait a second. Yeah. Okay, they said water, all right? And I'm adding this other stuff into water. Most stuff I add into water renders it not water. Like, <laughs> you know, so there's a valid question. Um, and I would say that with an electrolyte supplement, like a replenish that is made to hydrate you, uh, it is an enhancement to your water. Um, I, that it, I would count it as part of my hundred ounces per day and you do not need to go up, you know, quote, plain water on top of that, which isn't true for almost everything else. Maybe like coffee. if you do AG1, like if you do greens or like superfood powder and then maybe some electrolyte supplements would be two of the only cases off the top of my head in which I would allow that to be calculated as like Hydration. water water intake for the yeah. day. Yeah. Definitely not coffee. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not tea. Definitely not anything with a diuretic or caffeine. Dehydrating, yeah. 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 
Well, I was just going to say, the big thing for me is I've tried to do a lot of research on electrolytes because I don't know about y'all, but my Instagram feed is full of just people spewing all this stuff. And I'm like, what's actually factual? And what I love about electrolytes, not only does it hydrate you, um, but there's so many other benefits to it. Something that I've started to do recently, and I know Morgan shares the same um, part of her routine with me, is I drink it before my coffee. So I wake up, I have my replenish before I, which... To, I'm going to be very honest with you, it was really hard oh, yeah. at first. I was like, but I just want my coffee. I have three kids, love my coffee. But it, um, the the sodium and all of the other benefits of electrolytes helps you actually retain that it has the caffeine hits your bloodstream faster. There's just so many more benefits to than just drinking regular water, which you should still also obviously drink regular water, but it is important to add the electrolytes at any time of the day. But I just choose to do mine in the beginning of the day um, to your routine. So yeah. I don't know, Charlie, I, do you take uh, electrolytes? Trish, I, yeah. I love how you um, organize your supplement intake around optimization of caffeine. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I just yeah. wouldn't expect anything. <laughs> Let's go. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty regimented with the way that I drink water and electrolytes. So first thing in the morning is 30 ounces of water with electrolytes in it. First thing. Mm -hmm. I mix it the night before and leave. I actually have a 60 ounce water bottle. I oh, drink 30 of it in the morning. Well, I'll get full circle, but I start my day with 30 ounces, have some coffee. I'll drink water throughout the day just as I feel thirsty, mm -hmm. right? So, and I guarantee I, I hit well over 100. And then right before I go to bed, I drink 30 ounces of water with electrolytes in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I that has helped my sleep quality tremendously. Um, obviously, you don't want to, like, be getting up and having to go to the bathroom a million times in the middle of the night. So you do have to, like you know, yeah. time it correctly for, for your size and, you know, all <laughs> bladder that, but, control. <laughs> bladder control. Um, but it, it's worked really, really well for me to sleep well. And then to wake up and pre coffee, always pre coffee. If I, yeah. if I have coffee on an empty stomach, I'm going to be jittery and, mm -hmm. you know, too, yeah. too energized, yeah. which I definitely don't need. <laughs> I like um, that you brought that up. I think that's a great tip. We actually talk about that in the book a little bit. We call it a hydration event where it's like you just sit and drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that you do that in the morning and the night, I think is a good tip if you are struggling to get water in throughout the day because maybe your job and you just don't have it with you. Um, find those times where you can kind of just chug water. But I share the same sentiment as everybody else here. Um, I count my replenish water as the 100 ounces of water uh, that I consume every day. I do think one other thing is important to note here. Um, I am, I'm a big fan of like bubbly water or like sparkling water. Mm. That is not, don't count that towards your it 100 grams. It does not count. So um, if that's something that you're also d thinking through outside of just the replenish and hydration, um, I'm excuse me, electrolytes, Make sure you're not counting that. So it's okay to have one here and there. It's helped me a lot with like mocktails when I'm wanting a mocktail. I'll actually put some replenish in a bubbly and like put it in a fancy glass and it feels like I'm having a little nice cocktail when I don't want to be drinking. So, um, but again, that does not count towards my allotment of a hundred grams or a hundred ounces. And most people do not consider anything with carbonation in it, a form of hydration. Although this is debated uh, but carbonation has j a few negative side effects. And the one that's debated the most, which I'm on the side of the debate that this is true, that um, carbonation uh, is, is calcium depleting, that some studies suggest that excessive consumption of carbonated soft drinks like Coca-Colas or carbonated waters can lower your bone mineral density. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so when people, my kids say, but dad, it's water. I'm like, no, no, no. This is my belief that calcium is deteriorated when you start drinking carbonation, and I tell them their bones are gonna melt. Yeah, I don't those, like it. Those, <laughs> tell me that. Those what? sparkling I said, waters. I don't like it when you tell me that. <laughs> I know, but it's it could be it could potentially most mainstream science considers it the truth, although it's still debated. Sparkling water should be looked at as a replacement for alcohol or soda, not a replacement for water. water. Right. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like that. All right, that. Amber. Hopefully that helped you. Yes, Amber. And uh, so we're moving into something a little bit more sad. I wanted to cover this on the podcast just because I am a fitness nerd and uh, just a historian. I, I am a big fan of people like Tony Horton, of Sean T. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Richard Simmons passed away. And it's really sad. He died at, at 76 
And obviously most everybody knows who Richard Simmons is, but in case you're like a younger generation and you don't know him because he's really been in his house for like the last 30 years, no one's really seen him, um, which uh, most kids might not know who he is, but he was a figure in the fitness industry uh, born in New Orleans. And uh, he became famous in the 1980s uh, for his personality. If you all know Richard Simmons, a lot of people dress up like Richard Simmons for Halloween still. Mm -hmm. I think I have once or twice before. (laughs) Um, But at one point, it's just an inspiring story because he was a product of his own transformation. So he's like 250 pounds at one point and uh, moved to LA where he started working at a restaurant and he opened this company called Slimmons uh, for Richard Simmons. And it was just a studio where he would do his like step anaerobic or step aerobic workouts and you know, his flamboyant attitude and voice is obviously super fun. I would, I'd shoot, if he would do like a super class today before he died, I would have definitely went to it to pay tribute to him. But, um, you know, a huge figure in the industry, and I always want to pay love and respect for those before burn. That's why I never talk badly about competition uh, because it takes, it takes a whole community of businesses and influencers and personalities and Fondas of the world and the Richard Simmons of the world and Tony Hortons of the world. These people paved the way for us to be able to do what we do today. And, you know, the positive positivity movement was on the back of Richard Simmons, like the modern day, you know, love yourself movement, um, you know, work out because your body is great and it's amazing and it's capable and you're worth it was all his narrative. And so yeah. I'm like, uh, I have a little bit of that sliver in me. Now I'm a much more intense trainer than mm-hmm. Rich- Richard Simmons ever was and probably going to be a more rooted in science because it's, we've had 40 years to gain science. But, you know, um, he added so much to the industry, right? Like, and will go down as like forever a legend. So rest in peace to Mr. Richard Simmons. And um, we hope uh, we hope your family is doing as good as they can during these times. And uh the Richard Simmons show will always go down in history as a, a, a fitness uh, television uh, show that was one that none of us will ever be able to forget. So thank you, my friend. I think part of what I know of him is he just wanted you to get moving, yeah. right? And it was like he had it in a fun way, right? Well, I never really did any of his classes, but I, I appreciate that he just put a focus on – and. We say at Burn Boot Camp, just keep moving, move your body, whatever that means to you, do that. And I think that he really drove that home. And again, that uh, this idea of it doesn't have to be boring, like you can still have fun while moving your body. Mm-hmm. So I appreciated that about, you know, his legacy in the fitness space for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I vividly remember seeing um, daytime television commercials selling his workout videos and that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys know this. I was homeschooled. So I was home during the day a bunch. Yeah. I saw a ton of these commercials um, and, and a ton of that stuff. And my mom worked out to this when yeah. I was a kid. It was, that was the era. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I remember that. I remember that was probably the first one, right? The first, yeah. like, order on TV. I think him and Fonda pretty much, Maybe. like, made yeah. the, made the do, do along with me video content. Like, yeah. they started that whole generation. Yeah, but, man, it was just, like, I, I will – never forget that mm-hmm. ever and all the things that it led to like Tybo do you guys remember Tybo yeah, yeah. Billy Blank those commercials and and all that stuff was just uh it was this little this little era of my life that I will never ever forget I mean if it's a feeder everything he did was a feeder to what we do today with Burn On Demand yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. no longer VH, VHS tapes that you have to order on an infomercial it's yeah. an app that you get to download it's the yeah. same it's the same thing right yeah. yeah definitely a legacy that he built and hope he knows that and his family knows that and like Devin said paved the way for all of us to be able to have a love and passion for fitness and to keep moving and to think about how many men and women he got off the couch and, mm-hmm. and moving in in the style that he, that felt good to them um will have an impact forever on on them and like the people that you know they they reach so thank you and we'll do our part here at burn boot camp to carry forward the positive optimistic uh community legacy that he leaves behind thank you again my friend uh moving on to member q a we have frisco texas a member chelsea r what's up chelsea uh she said oh i like this question 
What is the process of becoming a franchise partner? So a built-in plug here for us, <laughs> HQ crew, as we get to answer Chelsea's question, what is the process of becoming a franchise partner? Morgan, do you want to start with that one? I Sure, I would love to. And I think it's cool because everybody on the, at this table has um, – you know, worked with franchise development in our brand. Charlie has helped mm -hmm. us from an ad perspective, from a digital perspective and lead generation, as well as partnering with our burn marketing team um, to attract, you know, who we're looking for in a franchise partner. And what I love about this specific story is Chelsea's a member first. And we have so many stories of members wanting to, you know, have a bigger influence in Burn Nation and bring this to another community because they felt such a transformation and such a shift in themselves that they're actually like, hey, how can I go bring this to more people? Because it had such a profound impact on my life. And that's how Devin and I have grown this brand. And so I would, I want to say over 90% of our franchise partners did come from within, right? They had some sort of experience with Burn First. And um, the process is really starting to engage with us at headquarters. We have a dedicated team uh, of, of sales uh, men and women that are here to pick up your phone, to talk to you, to tell you about the process and make sure that it's a good fit for you because that's exactly what it has to be. It has to be a good fit, not just for you, but for us too. Uh, Devin and I could have grown a lot quicker than we did, but we really chose to make sure we're bringing the right people in that share our mission, that share our core values, that have business acumen, that have some leadership skills because owning a business is not for everybody and it's not easy. Even if it's a franchise system where you have things done for you and you have people that have gone before you, it still takes a lot of time, effort, attention, and, and passion, especially in fitness, uh, to make an impact on somebody's life. So uh, you go through a process where you're talking with us and we look at the territory you're interested in. We look at your financial qualifications because it costs money to own a business. And then we really just want to talk to you about why. What is your why? What is um, what what made you pick up the phone? What made you, you know, email us and what is your burn journey and what is your fitness journey and what experience are you going to bring into the business? And if all of the stars align, then you get to have an executive review call with me and our COO, Amber Burke. And from there, we, we go over the FDD. Um, you have it in your hands. That's our binding document, our franchise agreement to say, here's what you're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to sign this for five years. We have five-year terms at Burn Bootcamp. And then signing day is an exciting day for everybody. And it's where you start your journey. And, you know, within, you know, 10 months or so, you are opening your doors and you are starting to impact lives in the community that you choose. So it's a, it's a process that can take anywhere from uh, three months to, you know, even a full year if you're not quite ready for it yet. And that's just it depends on the situation that you're in, the territory that you're looking for. Um, but we are, we have plenty of opportunities here in the U S we're in 43 States. We want to be in all 50 States and there's a lot of opportunity still to make an impact. So, um, if you're interested, we would love for you to come check us out. Um, go to burnbootcamp.com and then, uh, click the franchise own a burn is the tab that you'll go to. You can give us your information and you can expect a, a conversation and a phone call within 24 hours. Did I did I miss anything, guys? I mean, what she said. Did you, did you do this a lot? Did you, do. you talk about this a lot? I was like, okay, she got that. You know, all right, yeah. So there it is. Charlie, um, obviously being on the leadership team for Burn Media Company, which if everyone anyone hasn't heard of Burn Media Company, it is our digital advertising agency or arm or division of Burn Bootcamp. And so uh, most of our gyms, when they open, will work directly with Burn Media. So talk to us a little bit about Burn Media and Burn Bootcamp and the relationship and how you uh, help locations get open uh, and what you do on an ongoing basis for franchise partners. Yeah, for sure. The, the, the interesting thing about our relationship is we do participate in Frandev as well. So in the franchise development side, oftentimes we get to meet, you know, pers prospective owners before they sign and before they join. And then we work with them all the way um, through their journey, through grand opening. And so what, what we really do is um, we, we look at their location. We, we meet the individual, the owner. Um, we study their area. We study their location and we try and make sure that they're getting uh, good content created for advertisements, um, that they're participating in local events and they're doing all the right stuff to, to build buzz in their area so they can open with as many members as they possibly can so they can impact as many lives as they possibly can. And, you know, going back to 
some names we mentioned earlier from from Springfield, um, Cami and Carly, they are a great example of this where they were so mission first. They were so focused on loving on people Mm -hmm. and making an impact on lives that that is the root of their success. You know, so they will have that conversation of what's their business acumen and and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing that led to their success is that, well, number one, they were coachable in those areas that they didn't know a lot about. They rely on Mm -hmm. HQ. They rely on the, the leadership there. Um, but man, they just put their heart and soul into loving on people. And that's what's made them so successful so quickly. What do you think makes a successful franchise partner, Trish, from your perspective? Well, I, you know, it's funny. As Charlie was talking, I was thinking about the different types of franchise partners that we do have. And, you know, we have the Jim Saffrons of the world who have, they, they have extensive background in entrepreneurship. Um, so he can bring things to the table that are different than maybe what a Cami and Carly bring, mm-hmm. who they were, like I said, they were Burn Boot Camp on-demand members first. So they got to experience the product. They got to experience really what Charlie said, the mission kind of lives within them. So I think it really just depends on what bucket you live in because you're going to bring something different. So where Jim, you know, he relies probably more on his team to bring forth that community where he's really just focused on the business part. And then Cami and Carly, they got that community. I've talked to them on the Mm -hmm. phone. And when we talk about marketing, they get me so fired up because they just know exactly what to do because they live, breathe, burn boot camp because it's impacted them um, personally. So um, that's kind of, I guess, I don't really know if there's a one answer to your question. It's really just dependent on what type of, what your background is coming into becoming a franchise partner with us. There's, well, there's also a growth arc you see as people open more and more locations, right? Where When they're a single unit owner, they start and it, they're really able to be super mission community focused. Mm-hmm. And then as their focus gets drawn between multiple locations, they have to empower people and, and get other leaders raised up to, to fill that seat in each location as they s- step back into the business and into the operations. And it's, it's a fascinating transition to watch as people continue to grow and open more and more locations. Yeah, it definitely is. And if you're somebody that wants a turnkey solution, not, not to say that there's not a lot of hard work that's put into it, but if you're somebody that wants the playbook, that wants a turnkey solution, like nearly 90% of our gyms are profitable and you know, we have this model that has been repeated over and over and over and over and over. And it, as long as you follow the playbook, you're going to be successful. And that is who we're looking for is people that want to follow the playbook. They, they say, I have this ambition. I have this drive. I don't like where I'm at now. I know exactly where I want to be. I just don't know how to get there, right? That playbook that you can just, if you can give me the playbook and you can give me a few resources to coach me through the playbook, if, if I don't have to do all of this myself, right, then I can go after my ambition and in in the truest version of myself. So that's, that's really who we're looking for. And then if you were to add uh, an element of culture to that, I would say make sure that you understand no business is easy. And so you better choose something that you really love doing because when the rough times get here, and they will, you're going to have to ride on your passion for a little bit of time while the market right sizes itself. And most franchisors aren't going to pitch downturns in their franchise, you know, profiling as like, but I, well, I just, they'd be liars. I, they'd be liars. <laughs> I just want to be real that it's, it, it's so amazing to go through the cycles together though. Yeah. Right. Like you're going to, whether you have a business or not, you're going to go through the cycles, but to do it together and to, um, really, protect the energy of the brand through the process, this franchise development selection process, like Morgan was talking about what we're doing here is we're protecting the energy. Once you get in, you know, it's like that, you know, I don't want to say in a weird way, but it's like this elite club with franchise partners. Like once you get in, it's hard to get in, but once you get in, you're there and you're where you should be. And if you ever decide that this isn't for you, then we'll give you a high five and we'll figure out how to move you on. And some people divest and some people move on, but otherwise, um, You know, we're looking for people that want to be here for the long run, that want to really pour their career, their time, their effort, their energy, and ultimately potentially hand it to their kids one day. That's right. Legacy. All right. Moving on to another article. Yeah. Okay. So I have the Forbes article up. This is an article about uh, pre-workout. We've talked a lot about pre-workout. So in honor of Blue Raspberry Ignite, which is out in gyms now, people. We're going to talk a little bit more about pre-workout uh, today. All right. So this Forbes Health article, and we have the link to the article in the description of the podcast. 
it talks about like the most generic basic information around what is a pre-workout and how does it work all right and uh i thought it was interesting because they i have taken a lot of pre-workout in my day and there are really good ones and they're really bad ones uh i'll say a brand that's no longer here because i think it's since it's no longer here it's okay i usually don't like shaming brands but this brand i'm pretty sure had uh something that was illegal in it that got it kicked <laughs> off the market it was called jacked 3d uh, does anyone yeah. remember Jacked oh, remember 3D? Jacked. i'm pretty sure I, took it. I didn't even know they were off the market so oh yeah GNC, uh, right oh yeah. yeah there was definitely <laughs> like crack sprinkled in the bottom of that thing. You probably should say something. that. <laughs> That's not the truth. I'm joking. I'm joking. But it was something that would, I had no idea what it was, and it got you going. So we got to find out. Well, I'm going to find out what that ingredient was real quick. But this is basically just breaking down like, hey, you know, the good, cre- the good pre-workouts are going to have, you know, caffeine and hydrose, which is like the dehydrated form of caffeine, beta alanine, like we talked about, it's in blue raspberry. Um, that's going to have things like taurine, green tea extract. You could or could not have creatine in it. Uh, we choose to put our creatine supplement separate uh, than, our, than, our, um, than our Ignite supplement. And it talks about how it really works, et cetera. So it's an interesting article if you... Um, are interested in it and it actually talks about the the niacin and is a particular particle that can leave your face and, and skin feeling flush we talked a little bit about that sometimes can happen with beta alanine as well but just an interesting article overall if you wanted to check it out about ingredients to avoid um acetyltame k it says uh, aspartame all these artificial sugars you should probably avoid it suggests in here so i'm not i didn't go deep into this article to really uh examine every layer of it um so i will not like promote this as something that i believe in but an interesting place for you to start if you're curious about uh chemical reaction of supplements and how it can uh, help you harm you uh what to look out for what to do what not to do yeah, and I think you did a really good job of like really digging into um, when we we're talking about Blue Raz earlier, just the benefits of of pre workout. Something that I know I've heard people ask is like, should I take pre workout? You don't have to take pre. That's like my opinion is you don't have to. I've gone back and forth with it. Um, you know, it's it's really to improve your performance and training. So you know, you take it about like what thirty minutes before your workout, and you just get that extra boost. Really, I think for me, it gets me like hype. Like I'm taking my ignite. I'm like I'm gonna go crush camp. So like it's almost just part of that like build for mentality. me. Of, yeah, it's yeah. like a mentality thing. And then like I think you said it earlier. It's like you take it, and it's like you gotta go work out now. Yeah. Like you gotta get that energy out. It's almost like on those days where you just. I mean, we all have them, right? Where you're just like, I don't really want to go work out right now. And it's like you're giving yourself all these excuses. Sometimes just take that ignite and you're like, all right, self-talk. Um, we're going to go do this. We're going to go 45 minutes all to myself and I'm going to crush this workout. So for me, that's kind of how I look at it. So I don't really think to go back to the question that I asked, you don't have to take it. It's really, I think, a personal preference on what you prefer in your pre-workout routine. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Morgan, how do you feel about it? I agree. I don't take it every day even. It's really just on the days that I need it or that I haven't gotten a lot of caffeine in. Um, I'm not someone who focuses so much on the science. So like that article was great, but I'm just kind of like, listen to me, it's like caffeine. It gets me going, especially on the days that I am not feeling it. And I agree with you. Like if I take it, my mentality is now I got to go work hard and like burn this off. So, um, I don't take it every day. It's not something I'm religious in. And so for me, it's like, I, I encourage people to try it and see how it makes you feel, see how you feel during your workouts. If you feel like you were able to give a little bit extra cause you had that energy, um, but, uh, but if not, like if you can still crush your workouts and get motivated, then that's okay too. Mm-hmm. Cause let's hear your take on it. I do not take pre-workout. Um, I've worked out a, a ton with, with Devin and I've worked, I've played sports with Devin. I, <laughs> I have no issue with being intense when it's time to flip it on. And I have so much caffeine throughout the day as it is that I'm just like, don't need the extra. I'm fine. <laughs> I can, I can flip that switch and what kind of like what you were saying, Trish, is it's almost like a mentality thing for you. It's a switch that flips. Mm-hmm. I have different ways of flipping that switch where I'm like, I'm not even going to mess with another supplement. And mm-hmm. I take a million supplements, mm-hmm. vitamins, and just different. I have my own, you know, thing that I that I take in addition to to other things. You know, obviously we do 
you know, afterburn and creatine. And I, I take the standards, but I have some extra things that I, that I do as well. And, um, getting pumped up for a workout is usually a song I want to listen to is going to get me jacked up or something like that. It's also, for me, it's mostly my warm up. That's what helps me flip that switch. That's really important to me. Stretching out, getting my heart rate up, jumping rope, doing some double unders before camp. That's, that's how I get going. And listen, everybody, I want you to understand how important it is to make your supplement selections because the FDA does not regulate supplements. Mm -hmm. Supplement companies can put whatever they want in your supplements, and it's not going to go through anybody's desk at the FDA, and it can hit mainstream shelves, it can hit e-commerce stores, and it can literally have shaved metals in it. You know, you could have things that literally could kill you in your supplements now, that's rare and few and far between, and people are mostly good, but there is an element and a risk to, like, you need to know or you need to have inherent trust in the companies that you're buying your nutrition from, your supplements from, okay? And so I, th I think that's really important because there was, uh, going back to that, uh, the Jack 3D, and it wasn't really about Jack 3D, and I don't mean to throw them under the bus. This was just legal at the time, although uh, if I was a betting man, I would not I'm sure they knew what DMAA was or 1,3-dimethyl amylamine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know how to say it. Dimethyl amylamine. Dimethyl amylamine. That's a word. I'll, yeah. I'll trust you. Yeah. I'll take so your word DMAA, for it. that was the ingredient that eventually was uh, banned by the, it was banned by the F. Uh, DA because of the issues that had warned over and over and over about it. And then they started seeing like actual severe side effects in human beings, cardiovascular issues, neurological effects, severe adverse events. Uh, so they finally regulated it. And um, now it's been banned and restricted in several, several other countries as well due to similar safety concerns. So there was one point when I was taking Jack 3D as a high school football player, like it was water. And just we were all dry scooping Jack 3D in the in the locker room, just getting our heart rates to 99.9999% of our max before we would go out and then smash each other's heads together. And that right, that is not probably something that you would want to subject subject yourself to. So there's information available today. I know Morgan, you're not a big science person. You got me for that, but Matt Morris and I believe in the human randomized control trials. We believe in peer uh, revised third party peer revised medical journals and 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 we there's an art and a science to training and we we take this science just as seriously as as we take the art we're always willing to change our minds but we are going to look toward peer revised independent studies to make sure that we um hold our responsibility high for our uh, our members in burn nation yeah but that i mean y'all's perspective on it is the correct one, which is our, our goal here is health. Mm -hmm. And so we can't put anything in there that has any evidence that it's not healthy. It's mm -hmm. not getting you to a better end. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. that it's much better to have a conservative look at those health risks than, than the other way around, especially when you're not, you know, <laughs> you're not getting on stage and yeah. doing poses and bodybuilding like th they can experiment with stuff. Yeah. I'm I'm good. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's too it's like the McDonald's standard um in the United States the standard for the FDA and our 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 consumption dietary consumption is it uh has to be proven it hasn't been dangerous yet. Right. In other countries it has to be proven safe. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a fundamental difference there. <laughs> right? Um we don't have to we don't have to get to human randomized control trials in order to put something into the marketplace. We got to go fast. It's about capitalism here. We need to market food and we need to go. And that's just part of what we need to look out for as Americans is as much fruit as that capitalistic tree does breed, there's cons to every pro. And we need to also make sure that the speed in which the country is moving when it comes to our bodies, these temples that, uh, that, uh, we get this one opportunity to exist inside of that. We take care of it with everything that we have. We believe in that. Right, Trish? Yes, sir. All right, guys. Well, um, if you have any questions about any of the supplements, hit us up on YouTube. Hit us up uh, on Instagram, anywhere. You can DM the Burn Boot Camp accounts. Anybody, anybody's handles here. They're constantly um, flying across the screen and in the show notes and all that stuff. Uh, but we are going to go to a member Q&A, all right? 
Uh, this is Marcy from Portage, Michigan. She said, what would you recommend for a small snack or meal pre-camp? Ooh. Trish, why don't you go with this one? This is an interesting question. I was reading this, and I don't actually like to eat before I work out. I am one of those people that, like, I'll see people, like some influencers that I follow, and they're, like, eating a banana or, like, a piece of bread with, like, avocado spread on it. I just cannot eat before camp. So I would – I have no recommendation for you, Mar Marcy. I'm sorry because I am just on team – I'll have a snack at, right after I eat. Um, and I, typically I take noon camp or I'll take like 5.30 a.m. camp and I might have some hard boiled egg like afterwards, but I'm not going to eat anything before, like a couple hours leading into it. Yes. I don't know. Charlie, do you um, eat before? No, I always work out fasted. Um, doesn't matter if it's a cardio day or burst training or push pull. I am, I am working out fasted. And um, I, it's what works for me. Uh, DJ, my wife, on the other hand, she, all, she cannot work out on an empty stomach. She will like feel faint and just not feel her best. And so I know what she likes is things that are, um, you know, have like some nuts in them mm -hmm. is, is really good. She, that she, it's what she feels good on. So, uh, one of the things that we always keep in our house, it's a good little healthy snack. There's these organic cashew clusters. It's mm -hmm. essentially like cashews, Those yeah. Are the best. but they're, delicious. they're pulled together with like, you know, they're held together with like honey. So even the sweetness is natural. Um, and, and those are, those are great. We, we love those around the house, but yeah, pre-workout. No, no, thanks. Yeah. I, I just, for me, I can't, can't do it. Yeah. I think about, I mean, for me, it's a little different depending on what time I work out. So mm -hmm. noon is my normal, but I've had breakfast and then really haven't had anything. And I wait till after to get all of my food in. Um, but then if I'm doing like a 5.30 or even a 6.45 a.m. camp, I'm typically not eating anything because I just – I'm waking up and really getting to the gym right away. So if I eat too close to my workout, I don't feel good. I feel yeah. like full. I don't, um, so, uh, But if I were to make suggestions, it would be something small um, – like half a banana or half a protein bar even, or those nuts that, you know, Charlie talked about, um, but nothing super heavy because it's just going to sit in your stomach during those 45 minutes. And especially on a cardio day, that's not going to feel good. I would almost recommend giving, giving fasted a try, but I don't mean fasted as in nothing, but water, like have, yeah. make sure you have at least 30 ounces of water 30 minutes before you're going to work out. I mm -hmm. think that is, is a good way. Cause sometimes people are like, Oh, I, I need to feel like I have a little something in my stomach. Well, water counts yeah. for that. Some and, replenish. Yep. Yeah. And you need to have a little electrolyte, a little water in your tummy that that'll help. I think you guys are exactly right by giving a, a range of possible, you know, ways to equip yourself with energy before a workout. Um, and, and the answer is, uh, despite all of the thousands of influencers that you might see that are pitching you this one way to do something, just be careful of that stuff because, you know, like, yeah, you can come to our gyms and you can buy a franchise if you want, but we have nothing really to sell you. Like, we're just going to give you the information straightforward and there's no call to action at the end of what I'm about to say. Um, but there is in, in uh, biology, there's the energy hierarchy or the utilization hierarchy of energy. And I don't know it super, super well, but I know it enough to just with like some notes to be able to make it understandable for people. And then you'll see once you actually understand the utilization hierarchy of energy that all the things that you're saying are right and there's no one, there's no way to do it. Like these are the only seven ways in which you can, your body can utilize energy for um, contraction of the muscle. And, and, and I'll kind of give a metaphor along with it so that we understand, but it, and along the way I'll stop and I'll say, okay, this is why you would eat something like a piece of fruit that's bioavailable because you want, you feel best utilizing this energy. This is why you would work out fasted. This is why you shouldn't fast for too long and then work out. Right. So the energy, uh, hierarchy starts at number one and I'll say some like scientific words only because I know there are people that really value that, but I'll try to give you a metaphor too. So the metaphor is like, if you could just think of like your human energy as like an energy bank of money and I'll, and I'll kind of do the uh, metaphor that way. So ATP stores, uh, are number one. Okay. And then the phosphocreatine systems, number two, and those things, two things are the most complicated and they're most immediately available. And it's what happens right now as I sit here and I just pull my arm up and I contract my bicep, that's ATP and it's so fast, it's so quick. And the phosphocreatine system um, is where ATP loses one phosphate. Now your ADP, it's the replenishment of 
a back into ATP for utilization of the muscle. That's the most complex one. Think about it this way. ATP is like cash. If I got to pay for something, I got cash on me right away. Boom. It's immediately available. It's the most, it's the quickest way to pay for what I'm trying to get. Number two, the phosphate creatine system is more like the stash that's like in your car. Like you, you paid five bucks for something. It was on you, but it was six fifty. You run out to your car real quick. You got a little bit of energy to re- uh, repair so you can mm-hmm. buy that thing in the moment and then you move on to the uh, uh, anaerobic glycosis uh, this is uh, this is less complicated but it's more like the utilization of carbohydrates at the primary or or, or uh, kind of the first level of um, uh, uh, of your glycogen of uh, glucose turning into glycogen then being used as as energy through glycogen glycosis out of the muscle belly okay so that's like a a, a check checking account right i'd have to go to the atm i'd have to take some more energy out and it'd take a little bit longer Um, my food takes a while to break down to store in my muscles as glycogen and then now when i contract that muscle my atp my phosphine system's gone boom i'm just using my carbohydrates next is uh glycogenolysis or gluconeogenesis which is um, two ways fancy ways of saying uh, the most common form of glucose uh, to glycogen energy usage. And then you go into number five, uh, aerobic metabolism, which is like the oxidative uh, state of um, um, those uh, those phosphates. So I don't want to get too complex, but it's the oxidative state of those phosphates. So you're basically using your carbohydrates uh, as energy all the way until you have no more glycogen. Then you move into number six, which is liposis or fat oxidation. This is where it comes. This is where fasting comes in, and this is why people will work out uh, on no food is because they want no glycogen in their muscle bellies to be the primary source of fuel and energy. They want to burn fat as their first uh, source of fuel, um, uh, lipolysis, and then you have. Number seven uh, is the protein cannibalism, uh, catabolism, where you don't want to get to protein uh, catabolism because if you're getting here and now you're talking about burning your muscle, uh, you're talking about I don't have any fat, I don't have any carbohydrate, my last fuel source is is um, basically my you know atrophy, the you're opposite of hypertrophy. Starvation at yeah, that point. starvation at that point. Yeah. And so muscle is the last form of energy that you would use, although you uh, it is a form of energy. And so that's my back back of the napkin, like super non-scientific way to explain it. I'm not a scientist. I probably said a couple things wrong there, but you get like, the, if you want to go deeper on this, it's just called the utilization hierarchy. So you can go deeper into the science if you're interested in it, but it's really just, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're eating food, you're using food as a fuel, bioavailable, uh, and f- not, to, not to be mistaken with energy though, by the way, uh, there's a difference between the energy it takes to contract and, ex- and, and extend your muscle. There's a difference in that energy versus a blood sugar energy and um, an energy that comes from, you know, caffeine or a lack of energy that comes from spikes of insulin, things like that. I'm talking about the energy it takes to move your muscles and contract and expand your muscles. So we can go deeper later and we, we like, we likely will, but if you're getting all the way down into level five, level six, level seven, if you're getting into, you know, fat oxidation, like you're pulling from your retirement account. Like you are pulling, you are pulling the deep fat, non-oxidated fat stores that have been there for a long time. And you're pulling those things forward, uh, to utilize as energy. And it, you'd never want to get to number seven, which Charlie described as starvation. That's like, selling the house because you need money let me let me ask you a question because you'll know the answer to this better than me but i've as it pertains to a a pre-workout snack i feel like there's a lot of people who go whatever i eat 30 minutes before is what my body's going to be utilizing as fuel and that's just you're you just don't digest things that fast so whenever you're working out it's whatever you ate yesterday And a week ago, this is, yeah. Yeah. So this is the distinction between the energy that it takes to contract your muscle versus the energy you need to feel awake. Correct. Right. Okay. So that's, that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to convert food into glycogen stores in, in 15 minutes. Right. But the reason why DJ might like something super bioavailable, like an apple is because it gets in your body, it gets your blood sugar right, it starts to regulate you hormonally, and it's this routine that you're getting in of giving your body 
this this bioavailable thing that has chemical reaction and it in a sense wakes you up like i don't know all the science behind it uh, other than those two energy systems are are different and um you know that you you for example like you pretty much like you got, whether you eat or not you're going to have atp right and you're going to be able to go lift something right if you don't that the lack of atp is demobilizing right, right. so i think that is a good distinction and why a lot of people like to have a banana or an apple so that their blood sugar doesn't go down because of the utilization uh, or the energy pull from the body on no other food source. And, you know, you have something there to protect against the blood sugar going down and you getting. So what happens when new members come in and they like get faint yeah. mm-hmm. or they start to get dizzy a little bit is because they didn't have any any anything in their body to stabilize their blood sugar as they're pulling energy from their body. Makes sense. I'm okay. gonna, I, what we need to do, though, is, you guys, we need to get some, like, real scientists on. Like, I probably said, like, five things wrong. We need to get real scientists on that, like, actually really understand this stuff and, like, don't need to, like, use the internet and chat GPT as a crutch. <laughs> right? Like, I understand it good enough to explain yeah. to somebody, like, you know, this is why practically you might want to eat food or you might not want right, to eat food right. or why fasting for four days is probably not a good idea because you're going to get through all of those energy sources and now you're going to be in um, uh, layer seven, which is basically eating yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So practically, but, you know, scientifically, there's a whole nother world that I don't have. I'm a business guy. And a, yeah, when, and so. Trish, I don't know if, you were, if you're like me. I tried having snacks before and, do, and for, I just felt better when I was fasted. And yeah. I think the main thing for me was when you're doing a really, really hard workout, like Metcon or <laughs> something like that, <laughs> If I have food in my stomach, my second wind never arrives. Mm. Yeah. That's how I feel. But when I get to minute 22 of a workout and I'm fasted, all of a sudden my energy comes back up. Yeah. And that's that's where I notice like, oh, this is good for me. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think then DJ is the opposite. She's like, absolutely not. I got to have something in my stomach. So yeah. that that's just that was the decision there, for I me. Yeah. yeah. Just trial and error. See that. what works for you and yep. and go from there. All right. Are we moving on to the next member question? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this is the last one for the day. Um, and we have Haley Grove from Rochester, Minnesota. She's going to ask, what are some tips for working out and staying on track while working night shifts? So let's just have a conversation overall. We can talk about night shifts. We can talk about your busy schedules. How do we, we talk a lot on this uh, program about making sure that we are anticipating the future, that we are prepared um, proper preparation prevents poor performance, the five P's. All right. I love the five P's. We've always, Morgan and I, our HQ team has always really, uh, believed that preparation, uh, is the best answer. And when you are prepared, you know, the road ahead, you can anticipate, you can start to rehearse the obstacles and then you're not surprised by things that get in your way as stumbling blocks as you go throughout the day. If we're waking up and we're just the first question we ask is, hey, what's our day look like today? When we are getting up now, the day's already ahead of us. Mm-hmm. And living your life uh, reactionary like that isn't going to, uh, you know, lead to likely a lot of progress. Will won't le- lead to likely a lot of happiness either, given that progress is happiness. And so, mm-hmm. Trish, we'll start with you. What are some tips for working out, staying on track while working night shifts? Oh, I think you hit it on the on the head of just making sure that you are looking at your schedule, figuring out what works best for you. I I was a trainer for a couple of years, in case anyone doesn't know that. And I actually remember because I would train the the afternoon, early evening camps, and there was one member that she and she always used to impress me. And all the members' stories that I heard were impressed me. But this one, she would come in before her night shift, so kind of like she had just slept all day, and this was like her like she almost had like a backward schedule of like what I would do in the morning. So she would start her night shift or before before she'd go into work with her workout and that would energize her to get through the night. So um, that worked for her, but I do think that it's a personal preference because maybe there's somebody that maybe they feel after getting off of a night shift, maybe you have a lot of energy that you need to burn coming off of that. So maybe it's actually better for you to work out afterwards. I think going back to what you said, it's just planning around what works best for you, no matter what your situation is, because we all have different things in our schedule, right? That kind of make it um, hard for us to make time for ourselves, but that's what's most important. I actually just recently hit 100 camps and something that kind of dawned on me was 
that was a hundred times that I put myself first. A hundred mm -hmm. times where I put, I prioritized 45 minutes because let me tell you, it's real easy to have excuses of, oh, I'm going to take this meeting or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go hang out, take my kids to the park, but no, I'm going to focus on myself. So, um, this isn't really specifically about night shifts, but it's just what, what time during the day works best for you to make sure that you are getting those 45 minutes or maybe it's a quick camp, quick camp on on demand, which is like 20 minutes long, whatever it is to prioritize yourself and make it a, a part of your routine because that at the end of the day, is what's going to lead to success. So that's what I would have to say to that. Yeah, Charlie, totally. what's your routine? My routine's very all over the place. I, I, I don't have a, a super regular schedule. I have super regular activities that must happen, right? Mm -hmm. So I, rather than say the time is always going to be the same, I just have these non-negotiables of a list that must be completed, right? And so sometimes that's um, working out super early in the morning, which I do very often. Sometimes that's working out at lunchtime ish and moving my meal around, which I feel better moving my meal around than I do missing a workout. Um, and then, you know, it, it's really about trying to get the most return on that time. So like Trish said, if I don't have time to, like we mentioned earlier, I live 30 minutes away from, from my home gym. Um, from, from the Lake Norman location, I, I'm not going to be able to get there, get back, get showered and get to a meeting or something if I, if I need to do that. So I can do a quick on demand workout. Um, I can go for a run, you know, like just do something, mm -hmm. but make sure that you, you have to set it in stone in your own mind that this is non-negotiable. Yeah. And when you make that choice, it makes everything a lot easier. Um, and as far as goals, like getting to your goals, I think one of the one of the biggest things that helped me change my mindset was thinking about where I'm trying to go instead of what I'm trying to get out of. Mm -hmm. So like um, I always mess with or talk with Devin when we worked out about how bad I was at pull ups. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of always telling myself I was bad at pull ups, I just said, I'm al I'm just going to do 50 pull ups every day forever from now on until I get better at it. And that focusing on where I wanted to get to got me out of thinking about I'm bad at this, yeah. you know? And so just a little mindset shift and then just make the decision. This is non-negotiable. I'm going to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Last thing, my father-in-law is very committed to his fitness. He works night shifts, has for 30 years, and he always does it after. And then he, yeah. he will work out. He will take a shower and go to sleep and sleep for five hours in the middle of the day. Like that's just how he does it. It worked for him. Mm -hmm. So maybe give that one a shot. Yeah. I, again, I think this is another trial and error of like, where do you feel the best? Where do you have the energy? And then obviously coupling that with what other things do you have in your life that, you know, you are going to have to move around, whether that's kids or other priorities. Um, I was just in Springfield, Missouri, like we mentioned, and there was a woman there, two women actually that came to the camp right after they got off from their shift. So they were like, all right, we're going home now. We're going to go shower and go to sleep. Yep. And so obviously like for night shifts, I've never experienced that, but some like it before, some like it after. And, but I think the constant that we've all talked about is just make it a non-negotiable and then prioritize it, put it on your calendar. Um, and that's, that's what works for me. And that's what has worked for me. And I can't just wake up and say, huh, when should I work out today? It's, it, it has to happen on a Sunday. Like I have to look at my week ahead. Um, and if I miss that time slot, then I'm really in a, in a bind. And so that I know how important it is to just show up even when I don't want to. Okay. So, yeah, my routine is, I think more similar to Charlie's in, in which, um, I'm easily imprisoned by a schedule. You like throw some, like throw some too many things on my calendar. Like I'll feel like I'm in like a, an invisible jail, you know, I can't move, I can't breathe. And Morgan knows this about me. This is, well, you look at her schedule and it needs to be like that for her in order for her to feel that she's in control and focused and not dropping any balls. She's the integrator of the company. She can't, right? Like that is part of how um, her environment has really shaped her personality and me and me as well. And so I think there, my suggestion on this, although I can't give you an exact answer, Haley, is what what is your what is your perspective like when you when you ask stay on the track like there's also a perspective that you are the track and there's no such thing as going off of it because you uh, embody the enjoyment of the process so much it becomes so uh, synonymous with who you are and your identity or part of your identity that there's no such thing as like getting on and off of something metaphorically it's like you actually embody it and become it right which is the 
which is a, a perspective and maybe one that some people don't get. I don't think that I always understood the embodiment of your habits and actually being the habit, not having a habit. Because once you be a habit and it becomes a routine, those routines are just behaviors in the world and the behaviors in the world become experiences. And then the experiences have thoughts that have feelings associated with them. And you get to choose your perspective on the thought and the feeling. So, you know, your routine in a sense is, is, is you and your perspective of you. So maybe a little philosophical and esoteric on, on this one for you today, Haley, but I, I truly believe that. And, um, if maybe you're vibing with that answer, maybe you can consider being the track versus trying to stay on it. Do you, would you say that you, you're when you're consistent enough to start seeing results to get the goal that you've set makes it easier because then you're once you're chasing progress, that's easy. Right? Yeah, it's the m- momentum that yeah. you build up over time. Yeah. And so part of it might be getting a routine that is kind of non-negotiable and very regimented and saying, all right, I can do this for three weeks. And then once you get through those three weeks, you start seeing the progress and then you're going to be so excited to just show up whenever you're available Mm -hmm. that you, you've kind of, you've made it into a habit. You've made it into part of your identity at that point that you're just, this is who you are. This is what you're going to do. Yeah. Being consistent. Yeah. Yeah. We just had a focus meeting with a on-demand member named Jillian. And we talked about this exact thing that what Charlie's describing um, in a visual sense could be like if you were plant an oak seed, uh, oak tree seed, and when you plant it and it becomes this little, this little plant, like, you know, the, e- the insects could eat it, the wind could blow it over very easily, somebody could pick it out of the ground, but the more that tree is reinforced with water and sunlight and water and sunlight and water and sunlight and given space to grow its roots, the thicker the, the tree trunk becomes. And when you do what Charlie's suggesting enough times and you, and you just go, uh, because you know this metaphor is the way that our minds work. It's, they're called neurosynapses and they're connections in your brain that you make once you start to form these habits and they work just like a tree trunk. They're very easy to snap and break if you haven't repeated them a lot of times or like I said, to blow away in the wind. But the more you repeat the same habit, the more your brain fires together, it wires together and you're going to start building these neurosynaptical connections that are going to grow stronger over time. This is this is part of the science behind who you become is partly in what your habits are and what you do. Um, so you can either have, uh, an oak tree that's reinforced in in positive, uh, perspective or a negative one. You can have a immovable, uh, oak tree that you've had to chop down. If you're going to do self work because of years and years and years of turmoil and experiences in your life that, have led you to have a negative self-identity, or you could have one that's extremely positive that no amount of human beings judgment could break uh, the perspective of you. So yeah, that was a great podcast, by the way. Uh, Jillian uh, was a a member in Edmond, Oklahoma with Kay, and then moved uh, to Maryland to follow her husband, who's in the secret service had three babies at the same time, didn't want to leave burn, found on demand, turned their shed out, out in the back of their yard into their mini burn home gym. And now Jeez. they do, yeah, now they do uh, religious six day workouts with, with Matt Matt on, on live. And so she came in for a focus meeting and I'm accepting any, any burn member out there that wants to come and, and, and spend a day with me here at HQ, come work out at the flagship with us, sit here on the podcast and, and, and talk about these types of things. Uh, growing progress, uh, how to get better, how to achieve the highest form of ourselves. We're going to do that right here on the podcast. You're invited to uh, come in and, and to spend some time with me. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that that is it for our podcast today. Thank you for joining us once again. Thanks for listening. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do that right now. That way you never miss an episode. Also, leave us a review. That is our feedback loop. And let us know how we're doing, what you love about the podcast, uh, what you'd love to hear about the podcast. Um, And as always, make sure that you are checking out our new products that we talked about in gym. We've got the blue raspberry, the peanut butter cup, and let us know how you like it. I'm fired up still. Woo! Yes. (laughs) We gotta go work out I I have one sitting in front of me, um, this peanut butter cup, and I'm like, it's been killing me not to take one of the So that is what I will be doing as we wrap up. So can we get a can we get a shot of uh, (laughs) can we get a shot of this coming out? Hold on, hold on. Morgan, take us out. Okay. Here we go. Two claps. You ready? Two claps right here. Do it again. All right. We're going to end like we always do. Two claps on two. One, two.
There we go. 